All right, you guys, so Zayn Malik finally opens up about his new music, the struggles he went through being in One Direction, and his current relationship with his former bandmates. The interview he did with Fader Magazine was both enlightening and emotional, but okay, when reading it, there were at least six times when I was like, wait, 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 WTF? Are you guys so I think we can all agree Zayn and his 1D high notes will always live on. Okay, so I don't know if you're like me, but this whole Zayn going solo thing is still really tough. It's like I want to support him, but my heart still really hurts. I'm in a glass case of emotion! So it's totally refreshing to hear Zayn's side of the story, and I can definitely see where he's coming from with a lot of it, but there are still some things that are pretty confusing, and I feel like we need to address them. So I present to you the top six WTF moments from Zayn's Fader interview. Number one, first and foremost, we have to address the fact that when Zayn left 1D, his reasoning was, I want to be a normal 22-year-old who is able to relax and have some private time out of the spotlight. Right? And then he signed a contract with RCA and in Fader Magazine talks about his new album and new music and how he's so excited for everyone to hear it and it's like, normal 22 year old life? I think not. It's a nice feeling to come out of a place where you are being told what to do and you know, to be of a certain way just because of certain expectations or certain things that people want to see. It is just all my perspective. I'm not fully liberating. Number two. So in the article, Zayn teases his debut song, Before. And obviously, the first thing I thought of was One Direction's album, Four. And then it hit me. The day this article was posted on Fader was the exact same day one year ago that the album Four came out. Coincidence? Hmm. Is it possible that there are no coincidences? Number three. So in the article, Zayn answers a question we've all been wondering. He says he hasn't talked to the boys of One Direction since he left the band, but he did recently talk to Liam. And in fact, they talked about collabing on music in the future. WTF, WTF, WTF emotions. Number four. He's sitting on a motorcycle, topless, with a beard. Honestly, I'm not really complaining, but... Yeah. Also, I'm getting some serious kiss you vibes. Can we please get a side by side? Which motorcycle Zane do you prefer? Number five, in the interview, he shoots down all rumors of Larry, making Larry shippers very sad. There's no secret relationships going on with any of the band members. It's not funny and it still continues to be quite hard for them. And finally, number six. So I think the hardest thing about this interview is hearing how much better Zayn's life is since 1D. And don't get me wrong, I mean, I can't even imagine being in the biggest boy band in the world. That cannot be easy. But I feel like Zayn needs to remember that all those years in 1D are what got him to where he is today. He's making the boys of One Direction look like puppets, and he's making the team around them look really bad. Plus, they just released their album Made in the AM less than a week ago, and obviously it's the first album without Zayn, so I feel like the timing of this article is just really poor. All right, enough of this. Let's go ahead and take it to the WTF lesson of the day. New beginnings are totally great, but you should always remember your roots. All right, you guys, I want to know all your thoughts on Zayn Malik's Fader interview. Are you feeling happy, sad, glad, mad, any emotions at all? Let's talk it out in the comment section below. And of course, subscribe to Hollywire TV and like and fave this video. That'd be really cool of you. For Hollywire.com, I'm Chelsea Briggs, and I'll see you later. All right, you guys, for more WTFs, go ahead and click that box on the left. And for more of our coverage on Zayn leaving 1D, go ahead and click that right box. Oh, and subscribe.